The Minister of Finance of Macedonia, Zoran Stavrisky, submitted to Parliament a rebalance of the budget, or more properly called, a supplementary budget. He proudly claimed the budget revenues, the income into the budget from all the sources, went up by 14% compared to the same period last year. He explained it by saying that tax collection is up 6%. There are four possible sources of such a massive increase in tax revenues. The first source is inflation. When the prices of goods and services go up, the taxes collected on the sale of goods and services also goes up. For example, VAT. The VAT, VAT collected on goods and services whose prices go up also increases. But you see, this is not a good explanation. In Macedonia, there is no inflation. Last year, actually, there was negative inflation, or what we call in economics, deflation. The second possible source is, of course, if the economy is growing. As the economy is growing, more goods, more services, more products are being produced. And as more and more and more is being produced, more and more and more taxes are collected. So this could explain how Stavrisky laid his hands on an additional 10 billion Macedonian dollars. But no, it's not a good explanation either. Macedonian economy is actually not growing, not accelerating. It is decelerating. At the beginning of the year, everyone said that the Macedonian economy is going to grow by 4%. Then they corrected this prognosis and they said that it's going to grow by 3.5%. And the actual growth is 3.2%. Most of this growth is an optical illusion. Most of this so-called growth in the economy is the result of increased government spending. If we look at the private sector, there is no growth at all. Industrial production compared to last year is up by 0.8%, in other words, unchanged. Export and imports, the external trade of Macedonia, is also unchanged. So. Maybe the UEPA, maybe the tax authorities have become much more efficient at collecting taxes. No, that's also not true. According to the recent IMF report, tax collection in Macedonia has become even more inefficient, even less well implemented than last year. The IMF says that VAT revenues and non-tax revenues, such as duties and customs, are not collected well and efficiently in Macedonia, that they have actually, the income from these have, has gone down. I repeat, income from VAT, according to the IMF, has gone down. Income from duties and excise have gone down. Only the income from uh, profit tax levied on corporations, only that segment has gone mildly up. So, no, the UEPA is not more efficient and people are not paying more taxes. The opposite is true. So what is left? Where is this money coming from? If it is not from inflation, if it is not from growth in the economy, if it is not from a more efficient UEP, and if the citizens of Macedonia do not pay more taxes than they used to, and the black economy is still more or less the same, what is missing? Where is this money come from? The answer lies again in the report of the IMF. The IMF says that the government owes Macedonians and Macedonian companies a lot of money. The IMF calls it a delay in public sector payments. This is a nice way of saying that the government is not paying back what it owes. It owes people money. It owes VAT returns. It owes back taxes to people. It owes payments to various suppliers and so on and so forth. And it is simply not paying. The last four rounds of VAT returns, the money that the government should pay back to people and companies who overpaid VAT. In the last four rounds of VAT returns, the government pays them only sporadically and sometimes not at all. I have spoken to a few companies and accountants in Macedonia who, conf who confirmed to me that the government is not paying back VAT, VAT, in the last four rounds, which means in the last year. I have spoken to other co companies and they have complained 
that the government owes them a lot of money that it is not paying. Well, of course, if you don't pay your debts, if you don't pay back VAT, if you don't pay to companies and suppliers, if you don't pay back to individuals, if you don't honor your obligations as a government, of course you have extra money. And this may well be the explanation why suddenly Stavrovsky has 10 billion Macedonian dinars that he can spend on infrastructure and other projects. As we get closer to the election, I suspect that he will find many more billions of Macedonian dinars to spend. This is an optical illusion and a political collusion, not economic reality. Sooner or later, Macedonians and the future Macedonian government will have to pay the price.